Hey there, this is a map for community GIS at University of Georgia. It walks through a couple of ways to, or three ways to um, style your data in QGIS um, to um, make your map pop a little bit more and work with figure ground, make some things stand out or other things draw in the background. So I'm going to talk about um, transparency today. I'm going to talk about shape burst fill and we're going to talk about draw effects, which is its own kind of subset of things. So what we have here, we have a, a map of parcels and buildings and a section of Athens that's close to the UGA campus and actually includes a section of campus um, here. And let's just start with the shape burst fill. So let's take, for instance, these buildings that are here. Um, these are kind of ugly colors right now. So actually, before we get started, let's go ahead and change the coloring a little bit. Um, this works okay, but I'm going to choose something a little more subtle, more kind of in the blue range. So let's say for parcels that we're going to choose something that's kind of a lighter blue um, and pretty kind of a muted color, something that looks more like this. And then for the buildings, we'll do something that's a little bit darker. So I'm going to go ahead and do that this way. We'll go back over to blue here and do something that's a little bit darker color like that. Okay. So let's just start with this. Um, you may or may not like these colors, um, but it's a, it's a place to start. Um, the parcel boundaries here are kind of sharp, right? That's a really dark black. So one of the things we might do is use transparency and lighten the border color um, to de-accentuate those, to put them more in the background. Um, so if I open the properties for the parcel there and go under simple, simple fill, it's pretty easy. If I go under stroke color, I can make the boundaries a little bit lighter in color but then I can also change the transparency right here. So I can actually lighten them up just like this, make them about halfway transparent. And now when I click apply, you'll notice they just pop to the background and all of a sudden it makes those buildings really come out. You can still see what those boundaries are, um, but they're in the background and the buildings really show up a lot more vigorously. So that's transparency, all right? Um, let's talk about using shape burst fill. So shape burst fill is just a way to add a little interest to the, the interior color, add some nuance to it. Um, and the way you do it is um, I'm opening up the buildings in this case. I'm going to click on simple fill. And under symbol layer type, one of the options is shape burst fill. So I'm going to choose that. And it's a color gradient between two colors. Now you could just go dark to light and it would look like this. That's fine. Um, that white's a little stark. Um, it makes it look a little kind of hollowed out. So what if we choose something, again, a little more subtle? So we could go back over blue here and just choose kind of a lighter blue like this. So it's not quite so striking. And if I click Apply, there you'll see it's maybe a little more subtle effect. Again, this may or may, or may not be what, what looks good to you, but it adds just a little more interest or depth to those figures. Um, so that's Shape Burst. And then the last piece of this is going through and doing um, a draw effect. And so there's lots of different kinds of draw effects. And actually, if you're going to do this, I'm going to recommend you don't necessarily do shapers. Well, we'll keep shapers in there for a second. You may, may not want to do all of it. Um, under layer rendering, um, see where it says draw effects here. We can click on that. And then there's a star here where we can choose what effect we want. And there's actually several of them, right? So we can have, um, say, an outer glow or a drop shadow, and you can see the drop shadow shows up when you add it. The outer glow, let's just see what that looks like. So if I click OK and click Apply, you'll see it adds this glow outside all those features and makes them, again, kind of pop out, show up a little bit more. Um, you can adjust. If I go here, I can adjust how far out it goes. There's various parameters here you can play with. We won't do too much with that. Let's see what drop shadow looks like. That's pretty stark, right? But it almost makes, um, one of the nice things about drop shadows is it adds a kind of 3D effect um, to the map. Um, we're also, let's turn off Shapers Fill. We'll just go back to Simple Fill, and we'll do an inner glow along with that, which will be its own kind of shape burst, right? Um, it, it does something similar to what Shape Burst does. That one, yeah, I don't know if that one works for me as well. Maybe if we turn off the drop shadow. Even so, I'm not sure that that effect is the one that I would use. But these are things to kind of play around with, right? And, you know, with all these, if I want to do an inner glow, again, I could change the color um, because here, you know, when it says single color, if I, again, wanted to make it something that's a little more kind of a lighter blue, maybe something like that, I click that and click Apply. There, maybe that starts to work, right? So it's not quite so white, it's quite so sharp. It adds just a little bit of something in these larger buildings in particular. Um, in terms of interest. 
So these are three techniques that you can play around with to style your data. It adds just a little bit of depth to the map. Um, you might think about um, the partial layer as well, maybe needs some kind of styling, but it gives you some tools to work with.